Okay, well, welcome everybody to well, a segment or a live segment I've actually called Kal Caledon Shipyards. Now, yesterday I went through and I showed off uh, one of my worlds, which is literally is a shipyard. It shows uh, sort of highlights and stores, all you know, lots of different creations that I've made over time. But I figured I'd expand the segment and use it just to yeah, show and highlight things I'm working on. Uh, to stream you know, prototyping of ideas and uh, just a real mishmash of the things I do in Space Engineers when I'm not playing survival games. Hence the title Caladan Shipyards. I go by Caladan on Steam Workshop which you can find a link down below this video. Um, so this is just a, a highlighting of the various things that I play around with, experiment with, build, test, design um, no set agenda like a survival game uh, it's not really these most of these are actually in a uh, creative environment so that I can uh, rapidly build up and prototype or build scenarios that I will then later work and run and play and jump in here yes yeah, yeah okay uh, and will yeah then later play as uh, a survival game and today I thought I'd highlight one such one such world this world I have called the Rakian Cluster. Now, much like the, the live stream that I ran before this, which is the Kalazari system, this is another custom built system. We have an Earth like world that we start on with an alien moon. Uh, it's not an alien world, it is actually moon size, but it does still have the standard 1.1 g uh, gravity and light, uh, low oxygen. So we've got a, a habitable moon in this particular case. Also, if we have a look around here, we've got, which one is it? That one over there, I believe is real Mars. It's off the workshop. Um, I really do like that world, so I actually utilize it in a couple of my custom scenarios. And its moon is another planet that I've got off the workshop called Hoth, or Hoth 2 actually, um, inspired or I believe based on um, Star Wars. It's a nice world. And I've set that as the moon for my real Mars over there. Up here we've got the standard... What is it? Europa? I'm going to actually just bring these up. Planets... I think it actually is Europa. Or was it Titan? I can't really remember which one it was. It's one of the ones out of the base game anyway. And I've put the normal moon and a small Earth-like moon in orbit around it. So this has got a dual moon up there. Um, so this whole system I've called Rackian Cluster. It's going to be a survival game. It's going to be a lethal survival game. Um, what I mean by that is most survival games, including the Easy Start survival game, You've got pretty much one pirate to deal with at a time. There's a couple of bases on the planet, and if you get too close to the others, they will can, of course, send drones, but by default, there's only one that's within range, and it sends drones to attack you pretty repeatedly or constantly. My own survival game, Cali, uh, Calizari System, there are three pirates within range, well, closely within range. There's actually a dead zone or a, a non, a safe zone, if you will, where your base is by about 600 meter radius. That's all well and good. It's a fun si situation, a fun scenario. I like playing that scenario. Uh, hence why I'm streaming it before this. This one, Rackian Cluster, is going to be a lethal survival game. What I mean by that is there is going to be at least, at least three pirate bases, all of which will be within range of your base. They will send drones by default. I will have wolves turned on by default now with the changes they've made to wolves such that apparently they don't attack structures they just attack you I think that would be good to have that turned on at this stage I have not actually added any defensive turrets or anything to this base uh, but that will come now this base is designed specifically for this scenario premise behind the scenario a bit of a storyline if you will you colonized this planet quite some time ago you've been here a long time you've had a chance to build a, 
quite an established base as we can see here with lots of refineries, lots of assemblers, good big production facility um, you're generating, you've got lots of resources lots of ores, yeah, sorry, ingots no, and quite a few components as well, you've, you've been here for quite some time then all of a sudden pirates find this world and see how resource rich it is and decide they want it so they move in and they're trying to take it over they land close to you so that they can eliminate you because you're the biggest threat on the planet you've established yourself already, you're the established colonists your goal and challenge of course is to defeat them like in any of these types of scenarios so you will actually will start with this base and well before I say any further let's just go on a bit of a tour of the base and in fact we won't start here we'll start with the main control center gigantic big solar array as you can see making use of ISIS um, programmable script for solar alignment absolutely magic script love it uh, use it a lot comes with this base. Now, believe it or not, let's just pop back out of here. Let me turn that on. If we notice on our HUD down the bottom center there, we're actually so high up on the Earth-like planet here that we're actually in a low oxygen environment. I was quite surprised when I found this location. I liked the location, decided to put the base here, and that's when I realized it was a low oxygen environment. With that said, what I did is I actually made the base itself airtight. We wait for our closed door. We're using an auto close script, so it just automatically closes the doors. If we have a look at the, the door itself, it's got the word auto in it. That's how I have set the script up to anything with the word auto in it of a door will automatically close after three seconds. Anyway, this base is airtight, it will fully pressurize up to high oxygen. Every room is the same. Okay, we're running Tim so we can. I know that's ISIS's script. This is actually MM Master's automatic uh, LCDs too. As you can see, we're running Tim, I, uh, ISIS Solar, automatic LCDs too, auto closed doors, and we are actually running floor plan as well. Although floor plan, as you can see, is turned off. It's used to generate a map or a, yeah, a layout, and then I turn it off rather than having it running active. This is our main control center. Here, from here we can see everything. As you can see, we're currently refining quite a lot of materials. We already have quite a lot of materials. That's our solar, solar and battery information. 44 solar panels generating that, 5 megawatts. We've got 268 batteries with a total storage capacity of 3.2 gigawatts. Um, and I don't actually have the full power display here it's in the other room I think it's six or nine gigawatts in total I think we've got including reactors Let's have a look total of 5.9 gigawatts in total 2.7 in reactors and 5.3 in batteries we've got more power in batteries than in reactors but that works well and it's all kept topped up with the solar panels Okay, as you can see we've got a lot of components. Tim's been doing its thing and building up a lot of a lot of materials for us. This floor plan is your basic outline now. I haven't given you a side plan, it's just a top plan only. We are currently residing in just here somewhere. This is the main control center. This is our storage over here and this is our hangar and production facility which we will get to. That said, yeah, by default we've got a medical bay and we've got three control chairs, or flight chairs, whatever you want to call them, for access to remote drones. Um, we'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that another way, actually. So let's just scoot ourselves outside here. Now, yes, this whole corridor does depressurize when we go outside. It's no big drama. So heading on down to our storage facility, let's just wander on down this way. As you can see we've got a cargo connector sitting up on top there, so any ships like world ships or build ships or anything like that, you can even use it just to dump ore in there if you need to find more ore. 
uh, they can connect up the top of this facility and transfer cargo in and out of it. Now coming on down here, as you can see it's quite a walk. It's only a little bit different with this base. There are lots and lots, let me just turn that off, lots and lots of lights required. Wish I could, yeah the door's going to close again. Um, yeah, yeah, what the heck, just let it close. Let's just walk inside. As you notice, all the lights come on as we walk inside. And we've got no glow. Oh no, there it comes. Oh, lovely. I really wish they'd fix that. Certain angles, and all of a sudden you lose your, your emissives off yeah, that direction. 90 degrees, uh, 180 degrees. No. No, it's actually probably only closer to about a 60 degree arc and we lose our emissives. Anyway, as you can see, the lights all came on as we walked into this room. We walked back out of the room again, they all turn off. It's just a method of trying to save power. It's all sensor driven up there. Um, basic storage displays. Um, that's Tim. No, no, they're actually all Tim. And as you can see, we've got lots of stuff in here. Plenty of expansion rooms, plenty of storage. Moving on. And we're going to go back up via the base actually. And we'll shortcut and we'll fly. Yeah, another walkway. This one takes us all the way down to our production facility and hangar. Now, yeah, I hate the light bug too. Uh, it's highlighted more down in here in this next structure that we're going into, the, the production facility. I actually use some spotlights in it and that really shows the bug bad. Um, I'm not sure what they think they're trying to do, whether they're saving uh, render resources by turning lights off when they're not being rendered, but whichever way you look at it, um, it doesn't work. Uh, and it's quite a pain. Yeah, standard airlock. Well, I can't say standard airlock. An airlock. Okay, this looks pretty normal. Okay, not highlighting. Okay. Right, let's hit the hangar first. Quite a large hangar bay. There we go, look at that. Nothing. All the light emissives have, have stopped. Yeah, we can see the light strobing there, but they're non emissive. And in this case, it's actually a much finer little spot there, isn't it? Actually, that's better with this new update. It's not quite as bad as just that one little spot, although it does give you that strobe effect when you flash across it, which is really a pain. Anyway. This is our hangar bay. It's designed primarily for construction, for storage, for unloading, offloading, whatever. We have... Now see, these spotlights should be really illuminating all of this. There we go, light levels, ambience are coming up. Um, that warning point there is actually the trigger for our doors. And once you get inside that range, the hangar doors open. It's about double that range on the outside that the hangar doors will open and all close as well when you come to and fro. Yeah, see, look at that. Now we've lost all our emissives. It's not just that narrow bit. And now we are looking at nearly that... So we're about 45, 50 degree angle. But it's not displaying any emissives. Okay, that's weird. That's just plain weird. Right, so that's the hangar. Pretty pretty straightforward sort of hangar. Uh, nothing special about it really. Use a sensor to drive the doors. Alright. Hydrogen storage, top floor. 
this is just a basic rundown, I'm not going to go into details of everything. We're missing our emissives down here, but there's not a lot of them down here. Reactor systems. As you can see, we've got like nine large reactors in here. Quite a few. Works as well as truck ladder batteries. Next floor down. And we have... What do we have? Whoa! Besides brightness. See, that's what it should look like. We have assemblers. As you can see, fully upgraded assemblers. Maximum upgraded assemblers, I should say. They're all, if I remember correctly, all speed modules. Um, I didn't put any other modules on the assemblers. I believe they're actually... I oh know. No, that's a energy efficiency. So it's three speed and one energy efficiency module per assembler. And there's a lot of them. Shite, that is bright. I've forgotten how bright that was. And depending on where you are in the base, depends on whether it triggers the light bug. Look at that. The lights are turned off up there. And then they're turned off here, and not up there. Anyway, going further down, we go down to the refinery level. And there's a lot of refineries. Again, they're all upgraded. There are two speed modules, one yield module, and one energy efficiency module per refinery. That's just my standard layout, that's my preferred upgrade layout for the different refineries. I find it works fine for me, and I do qualify that, it's just for me. But since I built this, this is the way I prefer to build it. Anyway, wandering on down here, we have, if you will, a back door. If your base was under attack and you need to get from here to your main control centre, we have this back door from our lowest level of our production facility, our refinery level, we come through an airlock into a tunnel. And I'm actually going to have to turn my spotlight on here because this is about to go really dark. There we go. Now this tunnel actually connects the refinery module or plant with the main control center. So you can actually access from one to the other without having to go out at all. You can't go across to the storage, but between control center and refinery and air and, and uh, hangar of course, you can actually, and it's all airtight as well, you can actually just walk between the two rather than going down the outside over there. So this is the basic start base for my racking cluster scenario build. Um, I haven't yet built much more off of this. Is I just wanted to, I got this set up. I'm quite happy with the arrangement of this. Um, I'll probably put one utility ship in the hangar. Uh, it'll probably be, I think, a mining ship that sort of matches with the scenario about the fact that the refinery's got all these resources already and has already mined all this stuff. I might even set up some mine sites that they've been working on. Voxel tools are great for that. Uh, and then after that I'll actually start setting up the pirate bases in the local vicinity to, to act as the, the threat for this scenario. Um, like I said at the start, it'd be at least I believe at least three, maybe only two pirates that are actually going to be within range, um, sensor range, so they will actually send drones from the initial onset of the game. There will at least be, a, there will definitely be at least another three pirate bases in local uh, proximity. Uh, namely, I'll probably set them up so that they get triggered if you go and try going after those first two pirate bases, minimum of two. So when you head over there to try and take out the base, you will be flying into the range of some additional pirate bases just to add that extra little bit of extreme hazard to the whole scenario. There will be some probably only two or three Gatling turrets that will be set up on this base. They'll act as more of a, uh, a fauna deterrent, not designed for actual incursion uh, repulsion, or repelling any form of attack. So this, the, the player will need to actually really step up their game and start building some major defences once they actually start the scenario. 
That said, also the other two planets and four moons that are in part of this system will also be, for want of a better way of putting it, overrun with pirates. This system was initially peaceful when your colonists set up their base here. An ideal place to start a new life on a new world. Since then, pirates and pirate factions have moved in and have decided to claim the whole system, whole cluster. And your task will be to eliminate them. And like I said, I'm not going to make it easy. And, and since I'm going to be playing this primarily, I'm actually not making it easy on myself. Um, once I'm happy with the final design of the, the whole scenario, I will release the initial starting version of it, just like an easy start. I will release that on the workshop. I do actually have... Um, I'll save that. I will actually, uh, yeah, put it on the workshop. I do did the same thing with my Calazari systems. If we come down here, we've got them set. Calazari systems, well, it's not extreme survival, it's just survival. Let me just fix that, that's not right because you start in a state safe zone to start with it sort of takes it away from being an extreme survival yep you can go away um, so yeah that's the start basic scenario that I start with um, I'm still I'm in an about putting that in the workshop uh, but I mean I've been streaming this one live for the last 21 episodes when I, when I started it this is another version of it that I actually run privately this one's a little bit different to that one um, I'm not going to go into that, it is actually still a survival game, however. Um, I do have Lone Survivor. This is not the Lone Survivor, it is a different one. It's planet-based as well. You're starting with a crashed ship. Yeah, exactly. It full liberate the system and the base that I just highlighted, it comes fully stocked with copious amounts of resources as you saw so you you've actually got the materials to start you just don't have the established base to start uh, so it will be a race really against time to actually build yourself up enough to be able to defend against it on constant onslaught of pirates before they actually really do a big dent in your base and make it hard for you to recover from it so that hence why I'm actually calling it a uh, what they call it before a, a no, a disastrous type survival thing. It's it's a real going to be a real challenge. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this one, yeah, it's it's a basic, it's a standard system that the game starts you with. But I've added a crashed mining vessel. It's a big mobile refinery that's crashed on the planet. You, of course, being the only survivor, and you've got all those resources of the crack v crashed vessel that you can use to actually build a base from that. Um, in fact, I can highlight that. Um, I do play a... Where the hell has it gone? There it is. Is that one? Yes. Um, this is another survival game that I play that's based on that. Most of these, you know, I play myself because I don't play in servers, on servers. should get around to that at one stage, but... Uh, there's no high priority for that. So, I don't actually like the easy starts that they give me that the game gives you. I don't really like them, to be honest. So I actually don't play them. I've looked at them, and I've been inspired by... Okay. Oh, okay. Idiot. I'm in a chair. Ta-da! This has all been built up in survival. It's got some... Unique little features that I like. I should really blueprint that ship at some stage. It's got a very much a lander type feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, name there? The hole. It literally is the hole. I've been mining this for a little while, and as you can see from up there on down, we pretty much haven't hit anything else. There is nothing else down here, to be honest. I'm still mining it because I'm using it as a, I'm going to use it as an entrance to an underground facility, huge one, but it's taking some time. I've got uranium over there, it's not quite as big, I've got iron over there, it's not quite as big. As you can see, meteors have hit quite often. But yeah, this has all been built up in survival, this 
base here was built out of the remnants of the crash ship which was over there somewhere uh, I ended up grinding it down stripping it all out and building up this facility which is a nice little facility actually it works well as you can see I use conveyor sorters to handle most of my resource and product management um, rather than using a script so I'm using MM Masters as um, auto LCDs 2 sorry automatic LCDs 2 and I'm not sure what other scripts I'm using to be honest I can't remember um, programs no that's the only one everything else is sorter driven as you can see you know, that sorter only allows ores to go through there that sorter drags ingots out back into here and this sorter over here pulls product out of the assemblers uh, components out of the assemblers to this one here and it might seem like we've got a loop back in here but it's so that we can actually get ammunition out of here back to our gatlings whilst we're still pulling ore and resources in it's and that's just an ejector it ejects rubbish the rubbish goes out the side here and down the hole the abysmal black hole it's gone um, very pleased actually with the way the arrangement of the sort has worked out uh, it's actually quite efficient you just have to recall remember that you've got it set up that way and know that you, for example I can't come here and try and access any of these if I want them I've got to go over there um, so it's pretty straightforward I can't even access my ice and oxygen generators however we can access straight through the oxygen tank which works really well when it comes to recharging up there it is right? there it is uh, recharging up our tanks so um, this is just another survival game I play quite enjoy playing actually I need to get back to it both these vessels are space capable they've been to orbit and back again that's this one here is a standard configuration that I use decided to try something completely foreign and alien to my normal design and I went with this one this one I even had to put an additional connector in up there specifically for it to get past the legs um, actually it works quite well surprisingly enough um, you can actually, you don't have to jetpack, you can actually fly up, you can actually jump up that little lip and you can actually walk your way pretty much right up to the cockpit if you need to it comes with all detector and antenna and like I said it actually works quite well for a lander type structure lots of manoeuvring and it works really well like I said I've also got, oh, come here a little tiny little runabout ship, this is quite a snappy very fast little ship that gets around I use it to basically just scoot around, it's more of a drone than anything else as in drone to run around and do things, not actually to utilise for anything this originally was was actually going to be and started out as a mobile drill rig there were drills set in here that actually would drive downwards found that that was very very problematic um, so I ended up turning it into a cargo carrier literally that's all I use it for now is just to carry cargo there's what about three cargo containers, four cargo containers all through the connector, the, the junction, whatever you want to call it there and a lot of my bases have got this arrangement set up specifically to handle this thing in fact we're going to highlight that by scooting over here yeah, it's a lot of fun actually getting over to this base here with the land base craft because of all the potholes but as you can see I've got it set up specifically to handle our land base transporter uh, it works quite well in a lot of respects I've actually got this um, drill rigs turned off at the moment, we've actually gone down past our uranium level uh, 
and we've had full extension of our drill arms so I didn't feel like upgrading it at this point in time I didn't see the need so it's just going to sit there idle until I decide to decide what I'm doing with it but as you can see I've actually already stripped most of the ores out of here and our iron one over here actually I will highlight this one there it is those are waypoints for the getting up off the ice plat plateau uh, to get over here it's a little hard to get up sometimes a lot more fun getting back actually especially when fully loaded all right oh, too far what have we got here in the moment as you can see again set up for the land-based cargo transport we've got yeah, we we've got a little bit of iron uh, iron there still it is actually still mining iron there it is there that's the iron at least this drill head here it's reached full extension we need to actually upgrade that as well and push the whole system down but we are here mining straight in to mine a room and in fact I'll once I'm finished with that one which will go probably another at least another 10 meters I'll probably reconfigure it and push in this way and push a room in here the same uh, again to maximize resources I'm actually setting setting the rooms up where the resources are and then I'll also probably bring them down here to where the cobalt is and I'll push through there and through there so they'll actually all become rooms this is designed to be a, a base a more fortified base not exposed to the outside but yeah that's just a highlight yeah, just another one of the survival games I play around with based on one of the scenarios I built it. it's well not really it's it's just a world that I took a standard star system that I then put a, a wreck on and started the player on it as a, as a survival challenge really you start with quite a lot of resources once you build, uh, break down the actual ship that is crashed there uh, so it gives you a good established established start yeah, there's no pirates in this whole scenario this is just it's just a expand colonize defend against the meteors expand out into space when you get there so just the standard planets anyway thanks for stopping by I'm gonna stop it there I've got nothing more much rather than just rambling on um, I will continue to highlight the probably racking cluster as I continue building that one up and like I said eventually I do plan on putting it on the workshop that's right extreme yeah, well, extreme deadly deadly survival game um, the Calizari system one as well I'll probably end up putting the, the starter for that on the workshop at some stage um, so keep an eye on my workshop page uh, they will end up there eventually probably with a bit of a story right up behind it just to give it a, a bit of scenario and premise behind the the system and the, the, the whole structure of the, the map itself um, but for now thanks for dropping by and uh, happy engineering and I shall talk to you another time